hello and welcome to my channel or back to my channel depending on if you you know have been here before or not my name is Maris and although this isn't the kind of video that I would normally make for my channel um, I got really into reading this year and these are the kind of videos that I like to watch on YouTube at least or on TikTok and I have gotten a lot of requests for more book recommendations on my Instagram even though it is more car oriented. I do have lots of people on there who like my book recommendations and this video is kind of late in the year. Normally people make them right at the beginning of the year to recap the previous year's reading list but this is a little late because I wasn't sure if I wanted to film it or not because it's not the kind of content I usually make but I decided that I like these kind of videos so I'm gonna make one myself. Um, 2021 was the year that rekindled my appreciation for reading and especially fantasy reading and a lot of that had to do with book talk but also my hairdresser who kind of introduced me to book talk. So if you're part of that community or you're familiar then you know what I'm talking about. But I kind of want to go through all the books that I read in 2021 and what I thought of them. So I did start keeping a reading journal. I went to Universal in May as a graduation trip and I got this cute little notebook in Harry Potter World. I know a lot of people have very like aesthetic looking reading journals and like reading bullet journals and all of that stuff. Mine's not. Um, it is set up with, I have color coded one through five stars and then this is my like challenge of reading 45 books in the year and I would highlight them as I went. Obviously I finished right at 45. This was my library and um, I would obviously highlight depending on the color of the rating it got once I finished and they were all in my little bookshelf. I obviously um, thought I would be reading more than I did but like I said 2021 was kind of like the year I started reading again. I didn't really start reading until March, so, you know. And then over here I have whether the book was physical, audio, or ebook. I obviously didn't read any ebooks this year because it hurts my eyes. Um, and I kept track of them as well as page numbers and then my total number of pages read by the end of the year. And then this is ranking my number one book for 2021, but I'll get into that later. This is um, my collection of books that I've purchased. So I have the date purchased and then the date finished and how long it took me, like whether it was one month or five months to read the book from the point of purchasing it. And then I can kind of keep track of like, hey, you bought this book over a year ago. You should probably go ahead and read it. It's kind of holding me accountable for not spending money on books and then not reading them. And I have a couple pages that are of that. And then I didn't read anything in January. I read one thing in February. But like I said, March is the month that I really got into reading. So to begin the month, month, name, and then books read, and then I would list them as I finish them. Um, and then I have reviews of all of them where I have the name, author, page number, publication date, and um, my one to five rating and then I have a little review if I have one which well I do for all of them except some of them I just got lazy and haven't filled out yet so I'll get to them eventually but that's how this is set up I already have 2022's set up and I did it slightly different I have 2022 um, my library, my goals, which I did expand my goal from 45 to 54. And then again, my months and what books, like if they were ebooks or whatever. This year I did add book releases that are coming this year so I can um, keep track of when things come out and if I've pre-ordered them or not and when they're expected to get here, etc, etc. And that's mostly for like sequels of books series that I've read and then my countdown for best of the year and then I'm already on my way into January. So that's how my reading journal is set up. I think I'm going to make another video about how I set up my bullet journal and when I do that I will probably do a less chaotic explanation of this as well and I will have it like in the flat lay format so you can see it a little bit better um, and it's not just me <laughs> pointing 
pointing at things and being obnoxious. Okay, moving on. So I have all of my books down here that I read that were at least physical books that I read. I read 20 physical books and 25 audiobooks this year. So I'm going to go through the physical books first and then the audiobooks. And I will say, like, I think some of my reviews of the audiobooks are a little bit skewed because some of them, it wasn't my first time reading them. Um, and I was just listening to them to kind of get a recap of the story. And then some of them, I feel like I didn't get the full impact of the book because I was listening to it. Almost all of the audiobooks that I listened to were classics because I have a hard time <laughs> getting through classics and being motivated to read classics. I know some people are the complete opposite, but I found a list of 200 classic books that you should read before you die. And... I've kind of started making my way through that list. Rather than agonizing over reading them, I listen to them because I am a full-time artist. And so it's nice to listen to them while I'm painting or whatever. Anyways, okay, let's get into this. The first book series, Rekindled My Love of Reading, is A Court of Thorns and Roses. Are we surprised? No, we are not. This is the book series that my... Um, hairdresser told me to read and it was her like all-time favorite she has a new one now and so do I but those started in 2022 so I can't talk about them right now but A Court of Thorns and Roses it is fantasy romance enemies to lovers if you don't know about this book already then you're you haven't been on book talk or involved in the book community this first one was written in 2015 or published in 2015 but the fifth one of the series came out in February of 2021 and so I think a lot of new people discovered it or got reacquainted with it again in preparation for the new book coming out and it was like all anyone on book talk was talking about for months and months which isn't surprising because it's a very good series here's the first one obviously five out of five stars I would recommend reading this it is 18 plus most of the physical books that I read are 18 plus because they're romance books. Second in the series, A Court of Mist and Fury, even better than the first one, which I didn't think was possible. This book emotionally and physically and mentally and spiritually destroyed me. I don't know. I just had a very visceral reaction to this book when I wasn't reading it. Like, these two I read while in my final semester of college. I had to do schoolwork and I had final papers and thesis papers to write and I couldn't just sit and read it all at once and it was agonizing. I really got sucked in to both of these. So also five out of five if you didn't know. Six out of five, ten out of five. Okay, next in the series, A Court of Wings and Ruin. I need to reread this because I was reading this in my final month of college and like I said I was distracted with all those papers and everything but it got a little bit more serious. This was the bigger one of the four that I had already read or of the four that I had. They're all pretty big but this one's significantly chunkier. I don't want to like spoil anything. I have found from reading all of these books I like the build up to the love story and then once everyone admits that they love each other and they can be together I get kind of bored and like I said my hairdresser she like loves the series and when I told her I was having trouble with this book getting through it she was like flabbergasted and she was like oh my god how what that's like what do you mean it's so good like it's a war there's a war in it by the way I just had a really hard time getting through it and I don't know if it's because the two main characters are together by this book and are unitedly that's not a is that a word no facing this other thing or if it was because I was distracted with finals and school ending and graduating and all of that but it took me a good like three months to get through this book I was reading other things in between but I just was not interested in this and I want to reread it because now I'm reading the fifth book in the series there's a lot of reference back to this book and a lot of things that I don't remember so I think that I just kind of like blacked out while I was reading it I did rate this four out of five in my reading journal and I want to go back and read it and possibly annotate it and I think I would appreciate it a little bit more but 
feel like I'm going to be attacked for that assessment. And also, I read these two in the span of like three weeks. And then I immediately started this one. And I think immediately starting this one, I think I was kind of burnt out on Akatar. I don't know. I just, I need to give it another try. So we shall see. And then this is the fourth in the series. It is a very short novella, obviously, compared to this last one. It's very short. I got through it in a couple days because I, I'm a slow reader and I can't sit and read. I know a lot of people could read this in one sitting. But A Court of Frost and Starlight, it's just kind of a nice in-between between the last book and the next book. So the next book, the fifth in the series, is the one that just came out last February and it's beefy. It's 750 pages and I just started reading it a couple days ago. But this was nice. It was lighthearted. There wasn't a lot of conflict or obviously like there's not room. It's just like everybody's chilling and it gives you like a catch up. It's not like the condiment but it catches you up on what everyone's been doing in the couple months since you've heard from them. So that's what that is. You can tell I was heavily influenced by Book Talk. The next book that series that sucked me in is From Blood and Ash. Similar like fantasy world as Akatar, 18 plus romance, enemies to lovers. This girl is chosen as the maiden and is supposed to save the society somehow from these evil creatures and evil beings and it's kind of like a war between two um, races of or not even races but like species species of people um and she is supposed to save everyone and turns out everything's a lie and she gets kidnapped and by the other the other team's guy not to spoil it but yes enemies to lovers she's a badass I love her and he's arguably my favorite romance man I know a lot of people love Reese from Akatar or Cassian or all of that. I haven't read Throne of Glass yet. I know a lot of people like um, the blonde guy. <laughs> See, I, I don't know. People are again going to be coming for me for that, but good, good book. It's beefy. She, she adds a lot of detail, but I liked it. It's not detail like Lord of the Rings where it's like they're walking down a dirt path for three chapters but it's like the the kind of detail that you want if that makes sense so I enjoyed it some people might struggle but I was glad it was this long because if it was shorter I would feel unsatisfied by the time I was finished with it if that makes sense next in the series kingdom of flesh and fire again the second one is better than the first in my opinion if I was to rank them all because similar to Akatar, the first book, there's a lot of world building and plot building. And this book, you know the characters, you know what's going on. And this whole book is them in denial. They both love each other or even like each other. Um, they still think that they're enemies in this book. And so it's another beefy one. But again, the right amount of detail. Okay, the next one in the series, Crown of Gilded Bones. I don't know if I just don't like the third book of book of the third book in book series. This, like A Court of Wings and Ruin, was hard for me to get through. This took me months to get through because I would read like two chapters and I'm just like, this was one of the books where again. There's so much detail. I was having trouble wading through the detail and I feel like a, not a lot happened and that's not true. Um, I read to about, I had this much left so, so I read all of this and that took months and then I was finally like all right you need to shut up and finish this book because I would just like to say that that isn't real I mean it is but it's like from a hundred years ago and it's a family heirloom and I'm don't want anybody to be freaking out about that um it's decoration not self-defense if that makes sense so I powered through this and it was good in the end I it redeemed itself in the end so this is another one I think I need to reread and be a little bit more committed to reading it all at once and really 
absorbing the story because when you read it over such a long span of time things get lost and you forget things and then it doesn't the plot isn't as significant also most of the stuff in this book got spoiled for me because I can't stay off fandom wiki pages uh so things like Poppy's heritage if you've read this book and you know what I'm talking about got spoiled for me which is my bad but yes and then the fourth book in this series a war of two queens comes out let me check my little thingy in my reading journal um war of two queens comes out in march march 15th which i already have pre-ordered on amazon and what i like about uh jennifer armentrout is her pre-orders and first releases come in paperback because i prefer to read paperback I know scandalous oh Sarah J Moss does not offer paperback on her initial releases you have to wait like six months for the paperback version to come out which is rude um not really but I know it's a it's a sales tactic but. okay now to take a little break from these romance series So, this book. I know I'm not the only person with this opinion because I recently watched someone's, uh, just like a studio vlog of an artist, but they read and they talk about their reading in it. Everyone loves this book, Song of Achilles, by Madeline Miller. Um, everyone on Book Talk is drooling over it. I was an art history major, so I love uh, Greek mythology. And there's a lot of Greek mythology in this. There's a lot of different stories that are all brought together. And, you know, you get like side stories of other parts of Greek mythology. Um, this is the story of Achilles and the Trojan War and kind of the story of the Iliad. But from a different perspective, it's a romance book. But I didn't like Achilles in this book. I didn't like that Patrocles chased him around like a lost puppy dog and couldn't live without him. And I didn't like how I feel like Achilles didn't appreciate him. And a lot of people love it for its love story. And I don't think it's really a love story. It It is in the end and he kind of redeems himself. But I think it's more from selfishness than from him loving Patrocles. So, unpopular opinion. But I enjoyed the Greek aspects of it and the tidbits of information that are placed throughout for someone who might not be as well versed in that. So I think I gave this four out of five. Not awful, but it didn't live up to the hype. Let's say that, and I, and I had trouble getting through it. However, this book, it was written, I think five years later. Um, same author, by the way, Madeline Miller. Um, this one was written early 2010s. This was written, I think, in 2018. This is so good. And I don't know if it's because it's from a female perspective and I do better with that. Which, I mean, I don't really because I liked Harry Potter and, like, Lord of the Rings. And those are from male perspectives. But this is about Cersei, who is the daughter of Helios, the titan god of the sun, and a nymph and she is born seemingly without power so she's kind of stepped on her whole life and then she realizes that she can wield magic through witchcraft so she's kind of the original witch her and a couple of her siblings but she does some stuff gets banished so she's on her own little island and she kind of has to figure out how to navigate being alone harnessing her powers you also get some other backstories from greek mythology you get to hear um, medea and jason's story you get to hear a little bit more of odysseus's story after the trojan war so kind of like while he's on his way home from his whole voyage that took place in the odyssey so like this is about the Iliad and the Trojan War and Odysseus is in this and then as soon as the Trojan War ends the Odyssey begins and it's Odysseus's journey and this is one of his last stops on his way home I think or his first stops on his way home I think it's his last stop but anyways she has 
lionesses and wolves that are her pets and she can communicate with. She goes from a broken girl to a badass woman and I love that. This is a lot better in terms of storytelling. Like I couldn't put this down whereas this I had to force myself to pick up. So of the two books that are talked about of hers I would definitely read Circe first even though Song of Achilles gets more hype. Personal opinion. Just All right, a few other random ones before I get back into series. Um, Scorch Trials. This is the second book in the Maze Runner series. Um, I read the Maze Runner in 2020. Um, it took me all of 2021 to read Scorch Trials because I was wrapped up in my romance books and I was like, this doesn't have any romance in it, so I don't want to read it. I ended up really liking it. Um, it wasn't as good as the first one. Like the first third of it, I was like, where is this going? And then the two, the last two thirds, I was like, all right, I'm here for this. I'm now reading Death Cure. I'm almost finished, but technically that is a 2022 book, so I won't talk about it. But um, this was four out of five. Jurassic Park. Um, I love this book. I love how scientific it was. One of my favorite classes I took in high school was biomedical technology, and I feel like a lot of that plays into this book. Um, there's a lot of like ethical reasoning in this. There's a lot of whatever Malcolm does. Chaos theory, that's what it's called, which... I don't really care about but I do like that it wasn't just like we took blood from a mosquito and put it in a chicken egg and now we have a dinosaur like they actually go into detail and it sounds obviously I'm not a biologist and I feel like they incorporated it well into this to the point that I was interested in it as well as just like it's a classic story obviously because the Jurassic Park movies are so popular but I had just never like sat down and read and I'm glad that I did because I really enjoyed it. I gave this four out of five because again there was nobody was kissing in it and that's what I want to read. Lost World um not as good as Jurassic Park because obviously in Jurassic Park, there's a lot of, like, ethical things that they're dealing with. Should, like, we're doing this for money and now people are dying and maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe we shouldn't mess with bringing these people, not people, dinosaurs back. In this book, it's obviously at the aftermath and they leave the island for, what, 10, 20, 20, 15, 12 years? I don't know. And the dinosaurs are still surviving on the island and have become wild, obviously, in the they're making their own ecosystem rather than being in their own enclosures. But everybody's just stupid in this book. Like, they should have learned their lesson in the first book to not mess with this stuff. And they didn't. And the decisions that are made in this book by intellectual people and scientists are stupid. And it just frustrated me because I was like, here's an idea. Don't mess with the dinosaurs. Like, just go home. Just a thought. Um, just a lot. I don't know. That was like three out of five. All right, two more series and then on to audiobooks. <sighs> Serpent and Dove. I really liked this book. Um, again, Enemies to Lovers. It is about a witch who's actually the witch princess. Her mom is the like queen of witches of the witches um but like bad guy bad guy queen of witches then there is a group of witch hunters who work for the church if the witch queen sacrifices her only daughter on her 16th birthday or just in general then all of the witch hunters and king and everyone who hates witches will die because it's like the ultimate sacrifice because it is a discontinuation of her bloodline. The daughter escapes when she's 16, is in hiding, and meets a witch hunter. Pretends she's not a witch. She says, Shh. I mean, I would never. And they fall in love and then he finds out she's a witch. I just talked for a full minute and my phone cut off. What I was gonna say was they're both hard-headed, which makes this frustrating because they don't act how they feel and that's frustrating but the chapters flip back and forth between being narrated by by Lou and Reed who are the two main characters so you kind of get a look inside their heads so it's not as infuriating but it still is a little bit because they are a pain in the butt okay so here is the second book in the series Blood and Honey this book was boring nothing happened in it it was a lot of plot building for the third book this series is a trilogy and all three are out so it's finished there's not going to be any more i feel like nothing happened in this book you need to read it to read the third one and the third one's good they're just wandering around in the woods this whole time trying to like find allies to help them in the war but like they're really just arguing with each other in the woods so boring 
Okay, third one. Ouch. Gods and Monsters. This was the time that I bought one on Amazon because it just came out and it was hardcover because I didn't read carefully enough and it wasn't available in paperback when it first came out, but not the point. This one's good. It does incorporate a lot of the stuff from the second book, so it makes it necessary. This one's good. I feel like it wraps the series up well. It doesn't leave you wanting by the end of it. Like, you feel satisfied with how it ends. I think my phone keeps overheating because it keeps cutting off and I'm getting frustrated. So we were talking about this. Um, good book. Lots of twists and turns. Would recommend. The end. Okay, so the final series that I read... In physical form is A Touch of Darkness. This is the love story between Hades and Persephone, but set in a modern world. Bueno. Spicy. 18 plus definitely, but very good. Now there's also a sister series to go with this from Hades' perspective. So these are all from Persephone's perspective, and these are all from Hades' perspective. So this, these are the same story from different perspectives. Um, I like this, but they're not coming out in sync with one another. But I definitely recommend this series because like I said, I really like Greek mythology and it brings in a lot of the gods. Second in the series is A Touch of Ruin. This one was not as good as these two. For me, there was too much smut in here. It felt like a toxic relationship because every time they would argue, they would just have sex to make up instead of resolving the issue at hand and that was frustrating for me because that's very toxic for a relationship and I was like no I need to stop doing this because in the long run it's not gonna be good for anybody's mental health so the Hades book that goes with this comes out May 31st there is another one in this series here I can show you here is how the series is laid out and the ones with stars are already already out so the Hades pairing with this book comes out in May and so I already own A Touch of Malice but I'm waiting to read that until I read Hades perspective in A Touch of Ruin. Anyways like I said this one felt slightly toxic it ended up being resolved in the end but while I was reading it I didn't even like you couldn't enjoy it. I wanted to smack them the upside the head with the book. Some people might like it for that, but I don't. But the storytelling and the plot are still very good. Hi, hello. Um, I'm editing this right now and I talked for an hour and a half. And I'm editing and I just finished the physical books and I'm only 30 minutes in. So I'm gonna make the audiobooks a part two. To this video and this one is gonna end here so <laughs> thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it um, follow me on goodreads it's just maris gullage if you want to keep up with what i'm reading and what i'm reading the things i'm reading and um, i hope i didn't bore you